and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be trying a puzzle that's been recommended to us, I think, five times since it was, it was released, and it was only released very recently. It's called Directions. It's this puzzle on the screen, and it's by Sudoku Explorer, a fabulous setter. Um, and I think a setter whose pseudonym is actually remarkably apposite, because they do seem to explore the limits of Sudoku. Uh, now this, I think, is just a normal killer Sudoku today, uh, but apparently it is an absolute masterpiece, so we're in for a treat, and I'll read you the rules in just a second. I've got a couple of things to mention first. Um, firstly, congratulations to Bobby Melham. Bobby, you have won the, the reward, or you won the competition, uh, for our patron reward for December, which was the Mexican standoff series of puzzles. So very well done. I'll be emailing you your Bubba is you key straight after I finish this video. Um, also, I need to say very well done to three more people who have somehow managed to get through the Pyramid Puzzle Hunt, which is this extraordinary series of puzzles uh, that we released as a Christmas gift <laughs> over on Patreon about two weeks ago. Um, and yeah, well done to Stuart Marsden, Kelvin Graham, and Zoltan Kutasi. I hope I'm saying that right, Zoltan. If not, I apologize. Um, but I actually have some pretty extraordinary news about the Pyramid Puzzle Hunt. I know some of you have been trying it for hours and hours and hours, which is not surprising. And some of you have got stuck. Um, well, I can tell you now that come the 1st of January, we are going to release a solve video over on Patreon for every single one of these puzzles. Now, if you have tried the puzzle pyramid, you will know that this is no small undertaking, um, but that is what we aim to do. And yeah, we <laughs> look out for that if you're stuck or even if you're not stuck, because sometimes solve videos are just good to watch. Um, so that's one thing to mention. Now, the other thing, of course, is the um, Patreon reward for January, which comes up in just three days time, I suppose, four days time, three or four days time, depending on when you're watching this video. Um, and that is all themed around, well, this is the first puzzle in that hunt. It's the hunts by Peter C. Hayward. And this seems to revolve around a letter sent to somebody called George. Now, George seems to be making films and this uh, scene in a first film, I think, seems to involve a cantina. I'm not saying anything, but some of you may know what this, uh, what this puzzle hunt is likely to be about. I can tell you it's pretty cool. And yeah, that's coming very soon as well. Anyway, all that said and done, let's get on with Directions by Sudoku Explorer, and I'll read you the rules. They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. In cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage, and digits cannot repeat within a cage. So completely standard killer Sudoku. So that means in those in that W pentomino there, the five cells have to add up to 26. And what you can't do is something like that. That won't work. Not because these nines see each other in Sudoku terms, they don't, but they see each other because they are in the same cage, and that's not allowed. Do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Okay, and I can see two or three things straight away here. I'll list them in order of likely interest. Um, first thing to note is that none of these cages look terribly interesting although I'll come back to that. The second thing to note is I was wondering briefly about sort of some sort of geometry trick relating to those areas which of course are linked by set theory. Um, so if you're not familiar with this, this 4x4 region, if you add a set of the digits 1 to 9 to that you will get this top 5x5 region which is uh, quite an unlikely thing if you've never thought about it, but it is indeed true. But here, I'm not really sure. That might come into play later. The only other thing I can see that's a... Uh, okay, that might actually be more interesting than I first thought, but a 12 cage, I do know something about a 12 cage, and we've got two of those there. Yeah, okay, there is something here. I think it's this 12 cage, the 12 cages and the 17 cage. A 12 cage must always have a 1 and a 2 in it. Now, the same is true, actually, of a 17 cage. In fact, a 17 cage... Yeah, 
a 17 cage actually has to have a 3 in it as well, a 17 cage in 5 cells, and that's because if it didn't, if it was 1, 2, 4, 5 and 6, it would add up to 18, and that's too many. So I think there must be something going on with 1s and 2s here, so let me just think about this for a second. Yeah, okay, let's look at this 12 cage. If the 1 and the 2 in this 12 cage were in these three cells, so if this was not a 1 or a 2, that would put a 1 and a 2 in the 17 cage into those two cells, which would mean in this 12 cage, where we know there must be a 1 and a 2, we couldn't fill it in. We'd have to put a 1 and a 2 into this little cell down here. Well, there are no such things as Schrodinger cells in Sudoku, although someone tried to claim to me the other day that that wasn't the case. I think there is a constructor, there's probably more than one constructor, who who has come up with a Schrodinger cell. Uh, I think that's with our testers at the moment. Um, but anyway, yeah, this is definitely not a Schrodinger cell. So what you can't do is have a 1 and a 2 in those three cells, and therefore that square must be a 1 or a 2. And the same thing is presumably true by symmetry for this 12 cage. If you had a 1 and a 2 here, the 1 and the 2 in the 17 would have to be in those two squares, and that would be a Schrodinger cell, which would also be broken. So that's a 1 or a 2. Yeah, OK, and I'm sorry, I was just, I was just trying to establish something in my head, but it's pretty obvious. These ones, this one and two, and this one two are different digits, because whatever is in here is forced into that domino and is therefore forced down there. Um, so actually, let's color those in, I think. Let's color those in. So that square now can't be a one or a two because it sees both colors. Um, now, <laughs> what does that mean? Ah, that square can't be a 1 or a 2 either. Because, well, we might as well colour a bit more, I think. We know that there's a blue in there, and we know there's an orange in here. So blue and orange also see that square, which can't be a 1 or a 2. Now, we know there's a 3 in the 17. Four, five. So I'm just wondering if this can be the three. If that's the three, it forces the nature. It determines the nature of both the 12 cages. Because 12 in four cells only has two options. It's either one, two, four, five, or one, two, three, six. So if that's a three, both of these would be one, two, four, five. And then you couldn't put a four or a five in the 17 cage, which would break it. Right, that's not a 3, because 1, 2, 4, 5 here, 1, 2, 4, 5 here, that would rule 4 and 5 out of the cross, so the minimum we could make these 5 cells add up to would be a 1, a 2, a 3, a 6 and a 7, and that's 19 I think. Um, so, so that is not a 3. Now... I sort of feel like I want these to be different. If they're the same, one, two, three, six, one, two. No, they can't both be one, two, three, six, because that would lock a three out of the 17. What if they're both one, two, four? F no, th and we've just said they can't both be one, two, four, five. Yeah, sorry, that was, uh, yeah, I think I've beaten around the bush here. And, but I think I've arrived at something important. Whatever the nature of this 12 cage is, it is not the same as this 12 cage. They may look similar and they may add to the same total, but their constituents are not the same. Now that means that cell sees a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5 and a 6. And that's a bit of a problem for the 17 cage. That's really beautiful. Uh, I don't know which way round these 12 cages are. One of them is 1, 2, 3, 6. So because we know that the sort of the sticky out bits, the dog legs at the bottom, um, the toes of these boots, because we know the toes of the boots definitely contain a 1 
or a 2. We know all the other types of digits have to be in the stems. So one of these will have to contain 1, 2, 4, 5. One of them will have to contain 1, 2, 3, 6. Therefore, this square here sees all of those digits and cannot be any of the digits 1 to 6. Well, we can't put an 8 or a 9 in a 17 cage of 5 cells large, so that must be a 7, and that's our first digit. That's really rather beautiful. Um, right, and that means that these digits around here are 1, 2, 3, and 4 in some order, because that's the only way we can make the remainder of the cage add up to 10. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. Does that affect the 21 cage? The 21 cage now doesn't have a 7 in it, so it's not 6, 7, 8, so it must have a 9 in it. So that's got a 9 in it. And the other two, ah, right, and the other two digits add up to 12, and they're not 5, 7, and they're not 3, 9, so they must be. 4, 8. So actually that is 4, 8, 9 in the 21 cage. That means that neither of those cells is a 4. No, one, there must be a 4 in one of those two cells. Both of these two cells see that cell. So now this little cell can only, well it's still got six options, but that I sort of feel like that's deliberate. Um, Hmm. Don't know. Have, is there some restriction on this 26 cage that I'm not appreciating? 26 in 5, no. This 26 in 5 cells, I think, is very open-ended. Um, 4, 8, 9 here. We've got lots of other, ah, look, we've got sort of a, we've got the corners of a picture frame of 21 cages. Look at those. That's weird. That makes me think about set again, but mm, not, don't really like it. I don't know of any Fistemafel variation that uses those two by twos. At least I don't think I do. Um, maybe we could construct one. I will think about that, actually. That might be worth considering. Can we do anything more straightforward, though, before we have to <laughs> wade off into the realms of set? I'm not sure. Ah. Ah, uh, yeah, OK. Eight and nine. You can't put 8 or 9 in a 12 cage. So where do 8 and 9 go in row 3 of the grid? Not here. So they must, in fact, they must go there. And I bet that's the same in the column. Yeah, there's, there's certainly some unusual symmetry in this puzzle. Because what we're finding already is that when we get some logic, we can reapply it in another direction. So now... What does that mean? Does that mean... Uh, I don't know, actually. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not spotting what it means. Oh, I'll tell you what it means. I've got an 8-9 cage in my... I've got an 8-9 pair in my 26 cage now. So that's 17. So these three squares add up to 9. And that square can't be a 1, 2, or a 4, so it's got to be 3, 5, or 6. Oh, that feels like... It feels like there's something going on with this digit, doesn't it? Maybe if I can get a 3 locked into one of those two squares, I can get rid of 3 here as well. Then I'd know one of those squares had to be a 1. Um, hmm, how do we do that? How can we restrict this a bit more? We've got to, we know that there's blue. Blue is, oh, hang on, let me think about this. Blue and blue. So blue is not there. So blue is in one of those two cells. 
and orange is in one of those two cells. Blue. Oh, oh, for goodness sake. Right, where does blue go in box nine? Blue can't repeat in its own cage. It can't go in the 21 cage and it can't go in its own row. So blue is there. Ah, now. Oh, I was, I was hoping that was going to do anything, but actually it does. Diddly. No, it doesn't do diddly squat. Look, now this can't be blue anymore. If that's blue, where do you put the blue in box three? If those two squares are blue, you've got to put blue here because blue is a one or a two. And it can't go there because blue is already in those three cells. That's beautiful. So that is now not blue. Which means that square is not a one or a two because the one and the two have to be in the blue and the orange squares. Yes, ah, uh, and then we just apply symmetry and we're going to get the same restriction here on orange. This is so lovely. Orange now has to go there. And it's the same logic. This can't be orange because that would put an orange here in box three and clash with the orange already in column seven. So that square is not a one or a two. And now look, I've done it. I've managed to do this. I've now, I've now worked out in the 17 cage which two cells are the one and the two. Therefore, I've got three and four in these squares looking at this square, which can't be a three now. So this is now a five or a six. We know those three squares add up to nine. So these squares are either a one and a two or a one and a three. There is definitely a one in one of them. And we've definitely got a one in one of those two cells. So, um, does that help us? Blue must be in one of those two. Oh, yeah, so we, okay, we've got blue in one of those two. That's probably worth pencil marking. And then presumably orange in one of those two. We've got uh, three, five, and six down this diagonal. We've got, what else have we got here? Can we go further with colouring? That feels... Ah, yeah, maybe. Yes. You can't put orange in a 21 cage. So orange gets placed at the bottom of the grid now in box 7, which means that square is now incapable of having any shade of orange attached to it. So orange has moved up there. Now this probably works for blue as well. Yes, where does blue go in box 7? has to be here. <laughs> this is just so clever. Now we've got um, okay, so we've got blue locked in a domino, orange locked in a domino. Um, I don't know, it's still, I still can't quite see how we're going to resolve. Yeah, no, I don't actually see how we're going to resolve these blues and oranges. We may have to think about other things. What other things I you say? I wish I knew. Um, we have got, we've got eights and nines in a strange pattern here. So if those two digits are the same, you'd have to put that there in box five. And you've got the picture frame um, of these 21 cages sort of wants yeah because one of these strings of digits is going to be four eight nine which sort of makes me want to put four eight nine into either that triple or that triple to force the four eight nine oh no you can't do that ah oh hang on right i've just right so my instinct there was utterly wrong what i said was i wanted to put four eight and nine in here or here, or both. No, not both. I knew it couldn't be both because one of those is a three. Because I was thinking that if you had 489 here and 489 here, the 489 in column seven would now be in those three squares. And that would be a very sort of nice way of resolving the triple. But in fact, look, this can't work ever because that this is going to cause four cells in column nine to have to be selected from just three different digits. 
So it's absolute nonsense. In fact, in fact, I'm now wondering how many ways are there of making 21 in three digits? There's 489, which we know these two are not. If it's not got, but if it's got eight and nine in it, it has to be four and nine. It must have one of eight and nine in it because otherwise it would be five, six, seven as a maximum. That only adds up to 18. So if it's got nine in it, but no eight, it must be five, seven, nine. And if it's got eight in it, but no nine, it has to be six, seven, eight. So there are actually only three ways that 21 can exist. Now, what I'm now wondering is, does that mean these have to be different or do they have to be the same? I've got, I don't really, don't really know. Hang on, let me just look at this for a second. I'm just gonna make these the same version just so I can have a look at it and see whether or not I can see there being a problem with this or not. Don't think that gives me a Sudoku problem. It would force both the 12. Ah! No, right, ah, that's so, right, good grief. This is so clever. Wow, wow, these are different. These two 21 cages here are different because if they are the same, let's make them the same color for a moment. So let's imagine this is 579, this is 579. The problem there is with the 12 cages, which now both cannot contain a five and have to be one, two, three, six. But we know the 12 cages have to be different because if they are the same, you can't put enough different digits in the 17 cage. Because if, if you have, if these are both one, two, three, six, you can't put a three in the 17 cage. We know there's a three in, in the 17 cage. If on the other hand, you make the purples both equal to six, seven, and eight, these have to both be one, two, four, five. And now you can't put a four in the 17 cage. So, so we need to have different colors here. So one of these is going to be One of them is going to be 579, and one of them is going to be 678. Ah, this is crazy clever. Okay, and then we just repeat what we did with the 489 up here, don't we? <laughs> this, is, this is just gorgeous. Right. What is the nature of the last corner of our picture frame, this 21 cage? Well, let's ask the question, is it green? No, because if it's green, those four digits in column two have to be selected from three different numbers. Okay, what if, is it purple? No, because if it's purple, those four digits have to be selected from three different numbers. So this can neither B, green or purple. So it must be the other way of making 21 in three digits, which is that way, the 489 way. Let's give that its own color. So that is red, it's 489. In fact, I don't like red because it clashes a bit with orange in my mind. So I'm gonna make it yellow instead. Um, so this is 489, this is 489. Um, now, what does that do? That must, that must, that feels absolutely massive, doesn't it? It's so beautiful as well. It must be deliberate. Um, so one of these, one of these 21 cages is 579. So if this was 579, you get a nine in the 19 cage. Oh yeah, we've got symmetrical 19 cages. So if we did do that, that would have to be six, seven, eight. Oh, and that would have an eight. Ah, bear with me a moment here though. 
because I've just noticed something else. I am going to claim, and this might be wrong, but I'm going to claim that that is an 8-9 pair. And the reason I'm saying that is that whatever the nature is of purple, it either has an 8 or a 9 in it. I don't know which. But that means in row 9, there is an 8 or a 9 in this domino. Now that pairs up with the 8 or the 9 in column 2 and places the 8, 9, or the 8 or the 9, whatever is in here, whatever is in this domino, 8 or 9, can only live in this cell in column 6. So this square would have to be an 8 or a 9. But that logic is completely symmetrical because whatever is in here, if this was 6, 7, 8 or 5, 7, 9, it pushes an 8 or a 9 in this domino, which matches up with this 8, 9 pair and forces the 8, 9 in row 4 into that square. So there is an 8, 9 pair, I think, in the central box. Um, now, how do we use that to our advantage? So those that there's now... So whatever's in this square now is in that square and in one of those two squares and therefore in one of these two squares. Oh, this is getting horribly complicated. Um, uh, sorry, sorry. Let me just try and try and think. <laughs> Come on, let's wind yourself. Wind up the brain. Um, Um, sorry, I can't see what to do here. Can we... Um, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I really would like to know which way round these 21 cages go. In fact, I would like to know, there's, there's a lot of ambiguity, isn't there? I've sort of got lots and lots of things down to a choice of two without knowing actually which way round they go. Two, four, five, one, two, three, six. Ah, okay. Here's a small point. Okay, whatever the nature of this 12 cage is here, let's imagine it's 1, 2, 4, 5 for a moment. If it's 1, 2, 4, 5, this square's a 3, and this square is not a 3. But if it's 1, 2, 3, 6, that square's still not a 3. And that logic is symmetrical, isn't it? So whatever goes in here, it sort of forms a virtual 3, 4 pair in the row with this square. Because there's either a 4 in here and a 3 here, or there's a 3 in here and a 4 here. So that square is not a 3, and the 3 in box 3 has to be in this cell. And that is our second digit after nearly half an hour of me rambling on. Now, the problem with that is that I don't actually think that's going to tell me which way round these two 12 cages go because we sort of acquired this three through the mechanism of symmetrical logic applied to both of them. Five, six pair. Three. Got a one, two, three. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah, okay, so we're going to continue in the realms of ambiguity land for a moment here. Okay, now I can do this. Right, look, watch. Um, one of these two squares is a four, and I don't know which one. But whichever one is a four is going to force a one, two, three, either into this triple or this triple. Because, watch, if this is a four here, now the one, two, and the three in row two that we know exist in these three squares can't go in those cells, so have to shift up into the top of the grid. Whereas 
If this is a 4, now the 1, 2, 3 in column 8 have exactly the same role and force that to be a 1, 2, 3. And that is impossible because no matter how big we make this domino now, this square has to be an 8 or a 9 and it can't be. In fact, look, I mean, the only way of getting to a sensible total here would be a 2 plus a 3. That still needs to be a 9. It just can't be. So this is not a 1, 2, 3 triple. And therefore, this square is not a 4. And that gives us a, a breakthrough. Look, we've now got a 3, 4 pair this way round. The 1, 2, 3 go at the top of box 2. The 5, 6, 7 go across there. Oh, come on. That must do something. Um, I'm sure this does something. Five, six, seven. Um, or maybe it doesn't. Four here. Oh, yeah. Look, the three and the four do do things. They tell us the nature of the 12 cages. So this 12 cage now has to be a one, two, three, six, 12 cage. And therefore, that square has got to be a five. And that's a six. And then that should correspond with this 12 cage being a 1, 2, 4, 5. Yes, because it can't contain a 3 or a 6. So that's 1, 2, 4, 5. We know that's not a 1 or a 2. We know that's not a 1 or a 2. And... Ah, now we know that square is not a 3. And therefore, this square acquires a colour because this square is a one or a two and it's not orange. So that's got to be blue, which means that's not blue anymore. So this is blue and therefore it's not three. Um, and here is a prediction. I predict this square is going to be orange. Now, how do we prove that? We've got to prove that by saying that it can't be a three. Why can't you be a three, mister? Um, I don't know. But no, but Nost Nostradamus here um, claims that this square is going to be orange. That's what I reckon anyway. I reckon that's going to be orange and that's going to be a six. Just by virtue of the whole symmetry of the the logic we've applied so far, although I do think maybe maybe that's wrong because these two cages are do are breaking the symmetry that otherwise is sort of completely there. Mm, not sure, not sure. Maybe I'm jumping the gun. I've got a one-two pair. Ah, look, where does blue go in this box now? It's got to be on top of orange, so that is a one two pair. Now, is that useful? Possibly. Yeah, hang on, I know what we can do. I know what we can do. We've got a five now in one of those squares. So this 21 cage can't have a 5 in it, so it's got to be 6, 7, 8. And therefore those two squares have got to be a 3, 9 pair. And we know the order. There's a 3 here. Oh, we're away. 3, 9. That's not a 9 anymore. I don't know what button I was pressing then. Alt, Alt, GR on my keyboard. That was doing something very odd. Um, and presumably we do the same thing up here. This 21 cage hasn't got a 6 in it, so it can't be 6, 7, 8. So it's got to be 5, 7, 9. Now those squares have got to be a 4, 8 pair. I've now got a 4, 8 pair in row 1, which makes that square in the corner have to be a 9. Ah, now this 9 bounces back over here, look, and forces a 9 into that square which forces a 9 into this square. And all of a sudden, ah, now I've got 4s and 8s all over the place, so there's got to be a 4 and an 8 into two of those three cells. Now there's an, ah, yeah, okay, and now I'm going to disambiguate my 8, 9 in the middle box, because now I've got 9s in those squares, which plonks 9 in this domino, Eight in this domino is what I'm expecting, and indeed it is true. That's an eight in there. 
Now the eights align into those squares, so that should be an eight. This should be a nine, and indeed it is. And that gets me a nine here, an eight here. That through the medium of the 26 cage comes over there, or we could have used this, this eight as well. Um, eight is forced into that square in box four. That means I'm expecting to be able to get nine. Yeah, and I can, there are four nines looking at box eight. So that's got to be a nine. How many nines have we got? One, two, three. We can get that one. Uh, how, many, how many have I got now? All of them, all of the nines done. Can we do the same with the eights? Oh. Oh, that's surprising. Oh, we can get that one down there. I've got five of them only. Okay, so the symmetry has... It's either gone awry or... I'm not spotting some Sudoku I should be able to do here, but the eights don't seem to be a, as productive. So what do we do next? He says... <laughs> desperately scanning the grid trying to work out what's going on um, there's got to be a 3 in that 10 cage look now so that means this square can't be a 7 uh, because 7 would have to have gone with a 1-2 pair up here oh can I get ah oh, no there's an orange in one of those two cells do I know more about the nature of orange than I did before orange Uh, no, maybe I don't. Um, oh dear, <laughs> now I get stuck again. Ah. Uh, oh, come on, Simon, for goodness sake. This must be nearly finished. It just, it feels like it's about to tip. Ah, that 19 cage is done now. Look, it's got a 9 in it. It needs 10 more that isn't 1, 9, 2, 8, or 4, 6. So that's got to be 3 and 7. Desperately trying to see if that's resolved. I don't know that it is. Oh, whoops, I don't actually want to put them in like that either. I want them to put them in like this. So this is a 3, 7 pair. And... Oh... I don't know how to do that. Um, so that that's particularly unhelpful, actually. Four, four. Uh, four in row four is locked into one of two cells. Yeah, okay, we can get... It's got to be this one. If this is four, we get exactly the same problem with this square that we were going to have if this was a 2-3 pair because the maximum these two squares could add up to would be 6 which means this has to be at least 8 and it can't be so I don't think there is a 4 in that 14 cage I think that's a 4 which means that's a 4 and that's an 8 which means that's an 8 and that's a 4 which means that's not an 8 anymore And in this row, we've effectively got six digits. We've got five, ah, yes, look, we've got five, six, and seven to place in this row. That can't be a seven because of the three, seven pairs. I've now got a five, six pair. I can get a seven in my 14 cage. Seven in there by Sudoku. Seven, ah, that stopped, I think. So those two squares are a five, six pair. Those two squares add up to 7 to make 14. Um, two. Ah, I've got a 1, 2, 3 triple in column 6 that I hadn't noticed before. Oh, this is gorgeous. Now look at this column. What's this digit? It's a 5, a 6 or a 7. Well, it's not a 7. So, ah, the better question, I suppose, is where does 7 go in column 6? It can only go in one place. It's got to go at the top. That square's got to be a 5 or a 6. 7. Oh, do you know? I still don't know what that is. I still haven't resolved my, my oranges. Um, 
Okay. And I think I'm running out. I'm running out of cages. I've not looked at this cage. So this cage, those two squares add up to, ah, right, okay, these two squares add up to 11. They're not 2, 9, they're not 3, 8, they're not 5, 6, or this little square would be broken. So, oh, this is so lovely again. So this has got to be a 4, 7 pair, and the 7 here tells us the order. That's a 7, that's a 4. Which places 7 in this domino, places 4 in this domino, Ah, this 4 is giving me a 4 and an 8 over there, which gives me an 8 and a 6 over here. That gives me a 5 and a 6 in the... Yes, <laughs> oh, now I've done it. Right, now my prediction has come true. This is a 6. These two squares have to add up to 3. Therefore, that cannot be a 3 and therefore turns itself orange. That fixes the order of these two cells. Now blue might be gettable. Oh, no, it's not. Blue is in that domino. Bobbins. What about orange? No, orange is also not gettable. You rotten thing. Um. Oh, come on. That felt... I was sure that was going to be useful, but no, it doesn't seem to have been. So how, oh, we've got a six here. We can get more, more Sudoku might help us. Five, five, seven. Yeah, here we go, three, seven. Now we get a seven in the middle of the grid. Three has to be in, yeah, here's something a little interesting, look. Three has to be in this domino. Where does three go in this box? Well, in that, in one of those three cells. So the three in this column, actually, that's been available for a while. It's got to go at the top. That means that square is not orange. Um, hmm, okay, that square can't be a four. Oh, that square's a naked single, I've just realized. Because look, it's si oh no, it's not. I don't know what this is. Ah, oh, this is this is the problem with doing dominoes like this. I was about to say this square can't be a one or a two, but that's not correct because this square doesn't have to be orange. That could be orange. Oh. <laughs> oh dear. Um. It, well, that square definitely can't be four. That is true. So have we got a way of resolving what's going on in this box? We've still got to put one, two, three, and six into it. Six can't go there, look. So six is in this domino, and six is in one of those two cells. That's no use. Um, seven, seven. Oh, where does seven go in box seven? It's got to go exactly there. So these three squares are a three, five, six triple. Uh, that can't be a five because the five in column one must be in this, these one of those two cells. Ah, and there's a, th oh right, there's a three in the corner and that three in the corner, that three in the spotlight losing its religion tells me that that's a three. So that's a six, that's a five, that's a four. So that's not a four. Now, has that done some work for me? I think that might have done. Or maybe not. Um, oh, that square's not a five. Oh, here we go. Right, so that not being a five has reduced it to being a one or a two. So this is not orange. That is therefore orange. That means this square, that square is a five after all that. Although, okay, well that's good, but it hasn't quite finished the puzzle. We now know this digit, that's got to be a six, because this one has to be a one or a two. That places a three into this square by our old friend Sudoku, a three here by Sudoku. This six gives us a six at the top with a five here. Now that, ah, aha! Now, three plus five is eight, so that to make 10, we're gonna to have to make all of our oranges into twos. All of our blues are therefore ones. I can't 
Uh, I'm going to have to do this slowly because of the left-hand side being ambiguous. Oh, lovely. And now my 14 cage tells me this square has got to be a 6. That disambiguates the 6 and the 5 there. This needs to be a 5. That's a 4. That's a 4. These two squares have got to be a 1 and something. A 1 and a 6. Yeah, okay. So 6, 1. So that's definitely not blue. This must be blue. And therefore, that's the 1 in box 1. Um, now, can we tidy this up? So this square is a 3 or a 6. This Ah, that's a 6. That's a 3. And there we go. So it's funny. It's funny. I was focusing on these digits, not realising they were the last two digits in the grid. That finish came out really quickly, I suppose, as a result of the fact that we, we could just double-click on the 2s and the 1s. That is some puzzle, isn't it? Wow. It's taken me a while, 45 minutes. It, well, it felt hard, though. I don't know. It's certainly flown past from my perspective. Let me just think about what we learned as a result of that, or what I learned. I learned that, there were, well, there was something very clever going on with these. Actually, let me just check it's correct. Did I check? I can't remember. It is correct. Um, I learned the 12 cages and the 17 had a really interesting interaction. But I think that the real sort of pièce de résistance here is how the 21, these framing 21 cages have to be some very specific, well, have to be in a very specific order. In particular, these two, A, they can't be the same as each other, and B, they can't be the same as this one. And that's really extraordinary and far from intuitive, at least not to me. I mean, now I, now I look at it, I can see it's totally obvious that if this is 489, that can't be 489. But for some reason, when I first looked at it, it didn't occur to me. <laughs> Um, and once these are different, you can then show that this basically has to resort, resort to its opposite side and its, fr its friend over here. And the symmetry was very helpful throughout. And then after that, I think I got a bit bogged down. There was probably a more elegant way of resolving whatever I did next. I forgot what it was. We sort of forced some stuff into the middle box, didn't we? And eventually wormed our way. Yeah, the four in row four was eventually important. And having to put it here. Yeah, it's a stunning puzzle though. Absolutely amazing. You can see why it's called directions, because you have to keep scanning sort of in the symmetrical directions to see how, how everything is interacting together. And yeah, loved it. Absolutely loved it. I hope you did too. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I do enjoy reading them, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.